Hello and welcome to Footy Judge Mo. Merry Christmas to everybody that is celebrating Christmas. Rahim, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, and this is your Premier League preview, people. Welcome to Footy Judge Mo. Hit that like button if you just joined us. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Big up everybody that is joining us on this Christmas day. I hope you had a great time with your families, of course. And hope I hope that all your homes are filled with joy. And I hope that a new year will come in with all the success and joy for you, your family, your loved ones, of course, your friends around you. But we are here to talk about the Premier League, of course. Some big up. Just Joe, a football show. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to all the families, of course. Big up for everybody that is here. I have to big up everybody that is here. Hit that like button, people. Hit that like button, people. So let me just see who is in the house, people, of course. Of course, the first one, Ebo time. Matata United, of course. Of course, the Spankless. Of course, Wolves FI is here as well. Everybody that is here with us. Dexter is here. Jordi Toon, always here for me, my friend. 120 people to hit that like button, people. Of course, uh, Juanis Tonelli, thank you so much. Craig Lee, Daniel is here from Germany, of course. All the way. Wolves FI is here with me, of course. East Londoner, Gunnar, of course. And uh, Samas, I try to pronounce the name, of course. Jenny uh, is Jean is here with us, of course. A big up everybody that is here. Hamza Street is here with us. So, people, my guy Mo from This Is Football from Osam is here with us. Osam, of course, is here with us. But big up everybody that is here. Let's talk about the Premier League and let's talk about the coming games while also talk about the games that happened over the weekend. And we're only one, to be honest with you, there's only one place to start, which is the table. So, I'm going to show you the table right now at the moment and here you go the table of the premier league is right here right in front of you of course and you lay out of course i'm trying to integrate of course people here it's the first game that i want to talk about of course is the man united game okay that is happening tomorrow again it's aston villa and i want to ask you something people is it man united talk or it's aston villa aston villa go to old trafford Sir Jim Ratcliffe just took over. There is a talk of Graham Potter managing Manchester United, which is kind of strange for me, even though we spoke to staff yesterday on Al-Ahwa, of course. If you haven't checked up on Al-Ahwa yesterday, you have to go and check it out on This Is Football, one of the greatest shows on YouTube, of course, Al-Ahwa on This Is Football. We spoke to staff about the potential Graham Potter appointment he doesn't want him, but he rates Graham Potter. So Eric Ten Hag is under pressure. So back to Eric Ten Hag. Unai Emery, after last game, drew to Sheffield United, right? If I'm not mistaken. So drew to Sheffield United, and he has to win the game. I'm, I'm just showing you the results of Man United. So these in front of you are the results of Man United and Aston Villa. Aston Villa drew to Sheffield United. Man United lost to West Ham. It is kind of strange a little bit that we're actually looking at, at this Man United team and we're talking about Eric Ten Hag's lineup. Who is he going to choose for tomorrow? Bruno's going to be back. Of course, Bruno played last game. He wasn't great. Is he, is he going to start Kobe Maino again? Is he going to start Amrabat? That's what I want to talk about. But it's not looking good for Man United. It's not looking good because at the moment, Man United are sitting eighth, right? With... 28 points and if Brighton win I think Man United go down to ninth that's not great for Man United it's absolutely astonishing that we're talking here about Man United after last season and Man United can be dropped to ninth if Brighton win again is Spurs that's a big thing it's a shit show as people are saying of course it's a shit show this Man United to be honest with you absolutely a shit show and for Man United, is changing the coach the solution? I doubt it. 100%, I doubt that changing the coach is the solution, in my opinion. Because I don't believe that changing the coach is what is going to solve the Man United problems. This is just what I think, to be honest with you. I don't think that changing the coach is what Man United are, uh, are on for. Like Man United, to be honest with you, changing the coach isn't going to solve the problem. However... Eric Ten Hag should not stay at the job because this is a business result. And you cannot tell me that Eric Ten Hag 
should be staying man united coach after losing to bournemouth at home 3 0 after losing to west ham 2 0 without even performing being last in the group stage isn't something that Eric Ten Hag should be the coach. The Man United coach, to be honest with you people, shouldn't be someone who does this. Like, this Man United team is absolutely ridiculous that we're still sitting here talking about a coach who doesn't have a style of play, who doesn't provide anything for Man United to move forward, has not developed players. Players went back under, under him. I know that he has a lot of injuries. And a lot of people said, yes, you have injuries and you have stuff. But I want to see the style of play. I want to see what you can offer. I want to see how you can implement the style of play. Look at Ange Postokoglu. Look at Unai Emery. Not all these players are Unai Emery's players. Not all these players are Ange Postokoglu's players. I'm going to give you a team. Vincent Company has a style of play. Vincent Company has a style of play. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely nuts that we're sitting here and we don't have a style of play for Eric Ten Hag. He should have a style of play. People tell me transition-based football. Now, he plays position-based football without any danger. But in the same time, he plays counter-attacking football. He drops deep. He tries to press. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm watching. Yes, Daniel. Company is naive. But at least... They have a style of play. That's what we're asking Ten Hag for, right? So for me sitting here and I'm criticizing Eric Ten Hag, I'm like, I want a style of play. I want to open the TV, watch Manchester United and see a style of play. He doesn't have a style of play. So he has to have one. Now, Man United lineup, in my opinion, I'm not sure. Let's see if, if this, oh, oh, I need to change something. Apologies, people. I need to change something. So this, and I need to change this. Of course, this is something that is not. Here we go, people. Here we go. Here we go. I'm just changing the overlay and what what are, what are we viewing? Of course, Man United tomorrow. We have over 200 people, guys. I'm expecting to. By the way, I'm not looking at the likes, so I'm expecting the likes. Man United tomorrow. Are we expecting Maino to sit on the bench? I don't think so. I'm expecting him to bench McTominay tomorrow against Aston Villa and play Amrabat and Kobe Menu. Even though it's at home, but I'm expecting him to drop Kobe, uh, to drop McTominay and play. And also, I'm expecting him to drop Garnacho. Like this lineup in front of you, I'm not expecting him to play Marcus Rashford up top. I'm expecting Marcus Rashford to play on the left. Hoyland hasn't scored. That's why I have him on the thumbnail. Hoyland hasn't scored. It's absolutely not great 14 games i haven't scored a goal of 15 games if i'm not mistaken i'm expecting amrabat and kobe Menu. the reason why he has to drop mctominy because yes mctominy gets you a couple of goals but it's not but it's not because mctominy cannot play the number 10 he's playing him the number 10 and playing mr bruno fernandez as you see on the screen you see bruno fernandez is playing deeper this this lineup doesn't work like this bruno fernandez drops deep and McTominay goes forward. That's absolutely nuts. And I think, in my opinion, Bruno Fernandes needs to play close to the forward line. But we'll see how it goes. But I'm expecting, and my predictions, people, and I said it right here, 10 minutes in, clip this. I think Aston Villa will win this game. I am not. I am. There is no panel today. Um, this is a solo stream. This is Christmas Day. Daniel is asking... Ebo is asking if there is a panel today. Again, there is no panel today. It's only me. And you get to ask me any question you want. You get to ask me any question you want and I will answer it. But try to keep it within the same segment so we do not have a, uh, uh, like, to, to segue to another thing. In my opinion, I think Aston Villa win this game. A question here from Eduardo saying, does any United player go into Inter squad or maybe even the starting 11? Absolutely not. Not even one. And I promise you this, Eduardo, not even one player from the Man United team will start for Inter. Not one player at this current moment. It's this, which is nuts. We're talking about Manchester United. No player that, thank you, Ozanka, back for being here. Guys, thank you. You guys are supporting the channel. To be honest, the people that are watching us, the people that are watching us, the hammer is here, of course, Daniel, you know what? The people that are watching us, the people that always support Judge Mo. To be honest with you people, this is 
we started this journey. I started this journey two and three months ago now, or two and a half months ago. And to be honest, I am not even on 10K and I have 200 people watching me here live. This fills my heart with joy. Thank you people for the support. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you to people that send super chats. Thank you for everybody that supports the channel. You guys are making me sit here on Christmas Day. And by the way, just to let you know, today is my anniversary. And my wife is here at home and this is my anniversary, but I'm here doing a show because this is what I do. We sit here, it's a non-stop work. And I promise you, this is it. It, I'm here, this is my my wedding anniversary and I'm sitting here doing a show for you. I'm trying to be dedicated, I'm trying to be dedicated to my viewers, I'm trying to be dedicated to the people that absolutely support me on this channel and we're here, people. Imagine this, we're here. 230 people here and we're here. So the question is from Rashitan, do you think United beat Villa? I don't think so. I don't think so. And let's look at Man United coming games. We can absolutely look at Man United together. We can look at Man United coming games, right? We can look at Man United right there. Man United fixtures in front of you now. I hope you can see it on the screen. Villa, I believe they lose. Nottingham Forest, I believe they win that. Spurs, I believe they lose. Wolves, I believe they don't win that. And uh, West Ham after this in February, I believe they draw that. So probably get four points or five points maximum. Thank, but that's that's what I believe, to be honest. I believe they don't get a lot of wins. And I believe Eric Ten Hag, by the new year, is going to get sacked. If they lose to Villa, actually, I believe he's going to get sacked. Right away, a couple of super chats from Hamza Street supporting the channel. Appreciate you, buddy. This is how we support the channel. Thank you so much. Is it the coach or a whole system? Big up more. The coach is a big factor, but people don't want to say that. The coach for Man United is a big factor. Listen. My point is, if we see a style of play, but the players aren't performing, we'll say, yes, you need recruitment, you need this and that. Of course, it's the whole system. But in my opinion, the coach plays a massive factor in this because the players, I believe the players aren't buying into Man United system. I believe that. In my opinion, I believe the players aren't buying it. Thank you, Hamza Three. Happy anniversary. More best wishes to you and your family. Thank you so much. My friend, I believe that Man United problem is mainly they need to change Ten Hag. That's what I believe. But I'm going to move on from Man United. Moving on from Man United. And I believe that it's only right to go to the... People ask me to do Chelsea thing. And I'm... I'm Icardi. Icardi is shit. Icardi is not great. I, I don't like... I, I never liked Icardi. And I don't, I don't rate him as a football player. Um... I, I don't believe that, to be honest. Like I don't, I don't like, I don't like Icardi, and I don't think he's a good fit for Man United. He's a number nine. Come on, his problems. But one of the games I want to talk about is Crystal Palace against Chelsea. Arsenal coming, Liverpool coming, Man City is coming. But let's get on with Chelsea because people asked for Chelsea. Chelsea play Crystal Palace. Of course, the times in front of you are my time. It's seven thirty UK time. On December 27th, the day after tomorrow, of course, if you can see. And we can actually look at the table of the Premier League. And we see Chelsea. Well, Crystal Palace are four points behind Chelsea, as you can see in front of you. I can actually zoom in a little bit at this screen. Here we go. Here we go. The table is better now. Chelsea, Crystal Palace are 15th. Chelsea are positive one in goal differential. I believe that Chelsea's problems... And this is Raheem Sterling is suspended. Cole Palmer is suspended. I'm not sure how he is going to start, in my opinion. But Palace is not easy. But Chelsea, we will talk about the top six table, of course. Martin is here, is asking to talk about the top six table. But yeah, but let me just, Chelsea's problems. Robert Sanchez is injured. Still, they have Reese James, Kokoria, Enzo Fernandez is injured. Chokomek is injured. Ben Shilwell is injured. And I believe that the guy that played the last game, right, is injured as well. It's called uh, Oguchuku. In my opinion, Chelsea's problem is just putting the ball in the back of the net, which is, to be honest with you, it's nuts. Like, if we look at Chelsea's games, when they put the ball, because they create chances, Broya has a problem. Nico Jackson has a problem. Even Raheem Sterling has a problem. This 
in my opinion, is not Pochettino's fault. It isn't Pochettino's fault. 100% it isn't. People just want to scapegoat Pochettino. However, I'm going to have the same energy that I have for every coach. This is a business result. Chelsea sitting 10th in the league, as you can see my cursor here. You have to sack the manager as well. Comes the end of the year, if Chelsea, and by the way, by the end of the year, Chelsea will be 10th. Chelsea might not get six points because who do Chelsea have in the coming days? They have Crystal Palace at home. And after this, they have Luton away. If they win these two games and Brighton lose the two games, Chelsea might be ninth, which is, in my opinion, with the amount of money spent, Chelsea, Chelsea should not be sitting ninth or 10th. Chelsea should be in the top six. There is no, and I'm, I'm going to say that, there is no reason for me to sit here and defend Chelsea when West Ham are sitting six on the table and Chelsea are sitting 10th. With the amount of money that Chelsea spent, there is no way we're sitting here asking for Chelsea and looking at Chelsea on the table sitting 10th and West Ham are sitting six. Tactically, Chelsea, and let me just show you something about Chelsea, all right? Let me show you something about Chelsea, right? Average position, Chelsea are fourth. You can see in front of you. Clean sheets, Chelsea are ninth. Expected goals, Chelsea are third in the league. Third in the league, Chelsea. That's how many created big chances. Chelsea, second team in the league creating chances, right? But look at the shots on target. Chelsea are second in XG in big chances created. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but they only 10th. In shots on target, that means their forward line aren't firing. That's absolutely nuts. That's absolutely nuts. And that's for me, and Mo sitting here, Judge Mo is guilty. Because I rated Jackson. And the guy, bro, the guy, I'm going to get a, a, a comparison between Saka and Jared Bowen. Yes, someone is asking when we get to the West, uh, when we get to the Arsenal section, of course, playing West Ham. But we can't be sitting here talking about Chelsea second and big chances second. And 10th in shots on top. Big chances missed. Number one, 36. Number one. Number one, Chelsea. Absolutely nuts, huh? Absolutely nuts, people. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But tactically, the problem is, and let's look at Chelsea's last game. Let's look at Chelsea's last game, right? Chelsea, in last game, right? They had Malagusto as right back, Kolul as left back. They had Kona Gallagher in the center with Ugu Choku, right? And for me, they played a good game. They limited Wolves. They played a good game. They created chances. Sterling got to the byline. They played well. And then, for some reason, for some reason, they don't put the ball in the back of the net. Which is nuts. Because Poch is creating... Poch, listen, I'm going to say that, right? The coach's job is to get you into the right places to create a chance. The coach's job is to isolate. To isolate a player with a defender. And it's on the, it's on the player to deliver. Because the coach isn't going to go and dribble. The coach puts Sterling one-on-one -on -one with the guy. Now Sterling get the right pass. Sterling get the right cross. Malo Gusto going into a right side. Get the right cross, Malo Gusto. Get the right cross. Put in the right ball. Now, it's his fault, Pochettino, to sometimes pick the wrong lineups. Like playing De Sassi as right back. Why? Why is De Sassi right back? Like yesterday, he made a, a change at the end of the game. If I'm not mistaken, he made a stupid change. And then again, when he put an extra center back, at the end of the game, trying to play 3-5-2 or something like that. And subbed the two forwards, put in Kunku. Yes, you scored the goal from a cross, but I would rather keep a forward. If you're going to opt to crosses, keep a forward there. But he didn't. And Badi Shili made a mistake. Listen, I rate Badi Shili. He's a, he's a top, top uh, uh, defender. However, to be honest with you, again, and I'm going to say, and someone said it yesterday, Dawood said it yesterday, big up Dawood, of course, it's vibes, people. 
It's vibes. What I mean vibes are, if you played football, you know this, a win brings a win. A loss brings everybody down. And I still think, here you go. Mustafa Mukarab. I remember Mo was saying Chelsea better than United. Table doesn't like Rick. Table lies. Mustafa, table, the table lies on the football, on the pitch. I can absolutely, and I'm going to do this now because you're calling me out. I'm going to absolutely destroy you, Mustafa. I'm going to destroy you now, right? I'm going to destroy you, right? I'm going to compare Chelsea to Man United. And I'm going to tell you why I say Chelsea are better than Man United on everything. In everything, right? Here we go. Guys, look at this shit. This is Chelsea's curve versus Man United. That's not me. In every single attribute of the game. Watch this, people. Right? In the pressing, goals, attacking, position, counterattacks, defending, physicality. Every but everything is Chelsea's better. That's it. It's it's not me. I didn't create this. I didn't create this. So in my eyes, tell me that Chelsea on the pitch are better than Man United, right? And the stats say it. The table lies. Why? Because they're not putting the ball in the back of the net. That's my point. So if you don't like it, it's up to you, Mustafa. Let me do a couple of these super chats. Listen, guys, almost 300 people here. The more likes you get, the more likes you get, right, the better will get people watching. So please hit that like button, people, because it's very important for me, for the channel, for you to hit that like button, right? But Chelsea against Crystal Palace, I'm not going to back Chelsea anymore. I think Crystal Palace might steal it. Andrew here is saying, hello, Mo, spend Christmas Day myself today because of work. Oh, I'm sorry, my friend. No family or friends. Hopefully, see them in a few months. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew, for that. Hopefully, hopefully you will have a better year next year. So just make it as you have to keep the grind, keep working, keep at it, bro. And hopefully good times will come your way. Enjoy the journey. Because I promise you, you will always remember these as memories. Good times are coming, my friend. Thank you so much for always supporting the channel. Andrew, thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm sorry you spent Christmas by yourself at work. But good times are coming your way because you work hard. Good times are absolutely coming your way. Jay is saying Chelsea are victims of their own mistakes. Yes. Also, Chelsea make a lot of individual mistakes. A lot of individual mistakes. Tons. Tons of individual mistakes. Somehow. And I don't know why, but they make somehow tons of individual mistakes. Ozan Kapak, why are LFC chances to win the Premier League without January signings? I'm going to get to the section and I'm going to answer this one, Ozan Kapak, once we get to Liverpool. Right? I'm going to keep the super chat highlighted. Listen, people. Inexperienced Chelsea, as Martin here is saying. Inexperienced, thank you. Yes. They have inexperience. St uh, Raheem Sterling isn't someone And you said you will answer when Nkunku is back. So when Nkunku, in my opinion, so what is the question then, JC? One last Chelsea question. Will Nkunku save Pochettino's skin? I doubt it. I doubt it. There is so much work to be done at Chelsea. I said that Nkunku is back. I want to see it. But Nkunku look all right. But Nkunku cannot save Chelsea by himself. So no, I, I don't think so. Um, I want to move on from this to... The Man City game versus... No, no, let's talk about Arsenal. Okay, in the chat, everybody. I want everybody to tell me, do you want to talk about Arsenal, Man City, or Liverpool now? Let me know. I want everybody to answer. I'm going to see. I'm going to see what you guys think. So, which one do you want me to talk about? Arsenal, Liverpool, or Man City? Ah, oh, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. Which one? Indo, Liverpool, LFC, Liverpool, Liverpool. Where are the Arsenal people, Peter? Where are the Arsenal people? So it's Liverpool. Liverpool play Burnley. Liverpool play Burnley. Well, 
They play Burnley tomorrow. We're going to have a reaction for it. Hopefully, we're going to have Jerry James or something. But I'm going to say one thing, people. Our Liverpool don't look bad. Liverpool, people are panicking at Liverpool. I know Zan Kabak is here. What are Liverpool FC chances to win the Premier League on Jaroni signing? Here you go. The table say that Liverpool are second, 39 points. Do you guys notice something about Liverpool? Look at the table. Apart from Man City, you have a game in hand. Look at the table and tell me what you notice about Liverpool. They have the best goal differential. One point behind Arsenal. Yes, they drew Man United at home. Yes, they drew Arsenal at home. But I believe that Liverpool, their foreign line are firing now. However, I think Cody Gakpo is going to improve. Darwin Nunes is going to improve. How is he going to improve? I think Darwin Nunes, even though I think that Darwin Nunes doesn't have it to be Liverpool, but that's what they have now. And I think Jurgen Klopp, how he used them in the last game off the bench going to the left side, is how you should use Darwin Nunes. In my opinion. I'm not right enough Man City, but Man City have a game in hand. So that's what I mean. But Dar I think Liverpool, I'm looking at Liverpool, to be honest with you. I'm looking at the lineup. Dominic Sabosla is hitting a dip. But Dominic Sabosla is going to get better. Trent Alexander-Arnold is playing great. Van Dijk, by the game, actually. Van Dijk is getting better. By the game, Van Dijk is getting better. Be better. Gomez he played very, very well on that left side, waiting for Robertson to come back. I think, actually, Gomez deserves a start. I think he's going to start because now Tsimikas is out. Robertson is coming back in January. I think Gomez deserves a start. Unless, unless, here's this unless. Konsa, Van Dijk, and Konati play three in the back. Trent fully invert. Fully invert in the midfield next to Endo. Suppose like Gravenberg, and if McAllister comes back, and then you play the front three. Now you have three center backs. That's what I believe. Well, Gomez is good enough, to be honest. But Gomez goes forward. And that is something that is completely different. Gomez plays on the left side. He goes forward, right? So that's completely different than playing Konate, Konsa, and Van Dijk. That's what I think. But I think, in my opinion, Liverpool in January, and I believe now, and I'm going to say that, I believe in January, Liverpool need a left-sided centre-back. Left-sided centre-back, in my opinion. Why? Because I believe that Trent needs to fully invert in the midfield. I believe that Trent fully needs to be inverted in the midfield. Guys, with only 12 likes from 200, come on, are we getting... Are we getting... Uh, you guys are slacking. So, Kingsman here, FSG out, is saying... The DM can wait. I think we need attackers. So you have Cody Gakpo, you have Darwin Nunes, you have Lewis Diaz, you have Muhammad Salah, and you have Diego Jota coming back. And you have Gravenberch, who's an attacking midfielder. You have Sabozda, who's an attacking midfielder. You have McAllister, who can play deep, or he can play forward. So I don't think you can, actually, you don't need an attacker. Unless you get rid of somebody. Unless you are convinced that these attackers aren't going to come good. Well, in the beginning of the season, they were doing very, very well. They were doing very, very well. So, in my opinion, I don't think Liverpool need attackers. I think just people need to step up. People need to step up. And that's it. Like, I don't believe tactically, Jurgen Klopp has everything at his disposal to change it. What I mean by that. Let me explain to you what do I mean by this. You have the false nine in Cody Gakpo. You have the direct winger in Mo Muhammad Salah. You have the direct winger of Luis Diaz. You have the direct forward, okay, in Darwin Nunes, who is quick, super quick. And you have Jota, who is a goal scorer and a good finisher. So Liverpool, as a combination up top, have everything to create the right mix. The problem are the players aren't playing to the level. But not every club that has the players that get a dip, will ask, oh, let's replace this guy. I don't think it works like this. Like, I don't think that Man City, for example, if Julian Alvarez is playing a little bit 
less than in the beginning of the season. Oh, let's replace Junior Alvarez. Let's get somebody else than Junior Alvarez. A Ryan showed up here. Salah, Gakpo, Jota. And I believe Lewis Diaz. So people want to tell me that Lewis Diaz isn't a good footballer or he's a in a dip. So are we going to have the same thing for Martinelli then? For Martinelli? But let me just say that people, Toxic Tash is saying, Muhammad Salah is cutting that front line. If Salah plays poor, we just don't, don't score. Yes, but I believe that Luis Diaz is going to get in form. Same as I believe that Martinelli is going to get better. People want to say Luis Diaz is not it. Here we go. But Luis Diaz was it last year. Was it before. He's just hitting a dip in the form and you guys want to uh, like kick him out? Come on. It's just a dip in form. Luis Diaz needs to be, needs to be given a little bit maybe a rest, a different way of playing in my opinion and he's going to come good. Like Martinelli. Like Martinelli. Are we going to say that Martinelli is a bad player now because he had two goals this season? I think that's absolutely harsh. I have seen players come back from injury and it takes them a year. Van Dijk, and let me tell you, so the same people, I'm going to give you an example, people. Virgil van Dijk got injured with that stupid Pickford tackle. And when he came back, he wasn't the same. Look at Virgil van Dijk today. Look at Virgil van Dijk today. Virgil van Dijk is 32 years old. And look at Virgil van Dijk, how he is now. So Luis Diaz came back from the injury and he's hitting a dip. Right? I believe, just give him a chance. This is my opinion. I believe, wait, wait until maybe the end of the season or something. Give him a break. Try to use him off the bench. Jurgen Klopp needs to change a little bit. The whole pitch is going to the right side. I believe Luis Diaz doesn't have enough support, for example. Right? So that's, that's it. I believe that Luis Diaz isn't a bad. You guys want to tell me that Luis Diaz is a bad forward? Is that what you guys going to tell me? So Liverpool fans in the chat, you guys want to tell me? You guys, Luis Diaz is a bad for is a bad football player. People in the chat, I want Liverpool and not Liverpool players. Is Luis Diaz a bad forward, a bad football player? Someone in the chat, everybody, Liverpool fans, Arsenal fans, everybody. It's a yes or no question. Is Luis Diaz a bad football player? Yes, a bad football player. No, he's a good football player. That's it. I believe he, he needs to get benched. Yes. I believe he's not playing well. Yes. Like Julian Alvarez, sometimes he's hurting food and blah, 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 blah. But I believe that you don't sell Julian Alvarez now. Lewis Diaz is a dip in form. Do you, Arsenal fans, do you sell Martinelli now? Because he's a dip, a dip in form. Give me a break. Give me a break. For some reason, I'm, 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 not, I'm not buying this shit. Like, we give him a chance. Oh, you guys are re really, really quick to jump on, oh, let's kick Luis Diaz out. He's playing bad. He's playing bad. There is a difference. Luis Diaz has, has shown us his level. Do you remember when Mohamed Salah, after the AFCON, hit a massive dip in form? He used to score goals, but it wasn't up to the level of Mohamed Salah. After the AFCON, when he lost to Mani on penalty kicks, Egypt. But I believe that Lewis isn't a bad football player. He just needs to be given maybe different instructions. He needs to be uh, given different role in the team, come off the bench. It's it's so, you so, yeah, like, you want to, like, kick that player out, kick that player out, and it's unbelievable. I, 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 I don't work like that. Like, Lewis has shown us before that he's good. Andre saying, how is Klopp going to beat low blocks? He never can. I think you can, of course. I think you can. You, 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 you won games on low blocks. I believe. I believe, in my opinion. Um, players from Left C, would you take at Inter to win UEFA Champions League? Ooh, we play a completely different system. Ozan Kabak will completely play a different system. I would take Virgil van Dijk for sure. Uh, our goalkeeper is very good. Two players. I'll take two players only. I mean, I'll take Mohamed Salah to play second forward, to be honest. But that's it. I'm going to tell you the difference, Toxic. I'm going to answer this, okay? Mo, the difference is, Mo, Luis Diaz showed us before the level. Right? 
Lewis Diaz showed us before the level. Oh, big up the people that joined from North Side. We're about mm -hmm. to talk. Big up the people that joined from North Side. We're about to talk about Arsenal people. Thank you, North Side, for it. <laughs> For the raid, north side raid. Thank you so much. Well, we play completely different. I wouldn't take Trent because we have wing backs. Smash the likes, people. The people that joined from north side, big up everybody, of course. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Good comment. Thank you, everybody that joined us. Hit that like button. But the difference, I'm gonna answer this question, and I'm then I'm gonna move to I'm gonna talk about the Burnley game and how you actually Liverpool. Uh, are going to beat Burnley. The difference is, Lewis Diaz showed us glimpses of what he can do. Big up everybody that joined us, of course. But Nunes hasn't showed me that level that he can play at Liverpool Football Club. Does that make sense? Toxic Tash. So, Lewis Diaz showed me a level that he can reach. Nunes hasn't yet. Like, Nunes hasn't shown me what he can do. That's, that's the difference. Like Martinelli showed me that Martinelli can be here. Him hitting a dip now is different. Reese Nelson hasn't. Eddie Nketia hasn't. Eddie Nketia hasn't showed me the level of this. Oh my God, Eddie Nketia can reach that level. But Lewis, yes, did. So that's the thing. Does that make sense now? Did I answer your question? Toxic Tash? Ozan Kapak, what are LFC chances to win the Premier League without January signing? I think 10%. Because as of now, Ozan Kapak, you're keeping up with the pack. You're keeping up with the pack. Now, talk about the Burnley game. In my Burnley, by the way, people, if you guys haven't checked, Burnley won the last game. Right? So Burnley won the last game. Burnley, and this is it. Burnley won 2-0 away at Fulham. So the difference is, if you watch that, if you look at the statistics of that game, Burnley did not have the ball, which is the first time I think this season when Burnley don't play position. I think against uh, Arsenal they didn't have any position, and against Chelsea, North side, big up North side that is here. Thank you so no pick a prem team. Stop sitting on the fence. Merry Christmas, my bro, to you and your family. Thank you, North side. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Merry Christmas to you and your family. You doing a show in, on Christmas Day shows dedication, Northside. It shows dedication and you're dedicating to your people. Thank you so much for you. Thank you so much for being you. Thank you so much for everything. I'm going to answer the thing about Odegaard handball in a second. But about that Burnley game, I believe Burnley are the team that against a bigger team like Liverpool, you guys, Liverpool will smash Burnley. Will smash Burnley. The reason why I'm saying that because Burnley are going to try to play press Liverpool. Burnley are going to try to play higher on the pitch. Burnley are going to leave spaces for Liverpool. And in my opinion, and let me just say that, this is, and hear me out, most saying something that is going to be different. This Burnley game is Darwin Nunes' game. This Burnley game is Mr. Darwin Nunes' game. 100%. This is, Burnley are going to play on the, on the, Burnley, Burnley, are going to play, try to play a little bit higher. They play at home, Burnley. They play at home. They're going to try to maybe move forward, maybe try to do stuff. And I'm going to, like, Burnley aren't a team that sit back. Burnley, even though their position in the league is shit, Burnley's average position is 50% in the league. Burnley's average position is 50%. That means when they play at home, they aren't going to just sit deep against Liverpool. And they're going to commit about three or four players. That's when Darwin Nunes is going to shine. Darwin Nunes is on the left wing. He's going to have spaces to drive at this Burnley team. If it was against a low block, as I said, against other teams when they say low block, Darwin Nunes isn't great. But Darwin Nunes can be useful, especially when Lewis Diaz isn't playing at his top form, as I said. Put Lewis Diaz on the bench and put Darwin Nunes on the left side. Let him freaking run. At these people let him run oh shut up i'm sticking my mind that's the difference if we were i was the coach of liverpool against burnley specifically burnley from the bottom half of the table you want to play darwin Nunes because he's gonna have spaces he might he might not finish but i believe that darwin Nunes will get chances this game 
and he will score a goal this game. That's my belief. I believe that Darwin Nunes is going to score a goal because there will be... The difference is, the reason why I say Darwin Nunes can, cannot be the striker of Liverpool, and I said that many times and people don't believe me, that I hold Liverpool to hit this standard. So most of the team that will play against Liverpool will defend. Even Arsenal, by the way, when Liverpool were trying to attack, Arsenal were retreating deeper. So Darwin Nunes was in good at that time. When, when Arsenal opened up, Mohamed Salah and Zinchenko smoked the guy. But that doesn't happen all the time against Liverpool. Like normally, teams sit deep against Liverpool. So Darwin Nunes isn't good in tight spaces, linking up the play. Darwin Nunes isn't the guy who's dribbling. Darwin Nunes isn't uh, uh, that guy. Right, but against a team like Burnley, I believe that Burnley at home will try to go higher. Will try. Vincent Company is naive, as Daniel says, he's stubborn. He's gonna try to press a little bit. Liverpool play on the front foot. He's an idiot, right? But I believe that if he goes there, Darwin Nunes will have spaces. But that's how Liverpool will beat Burnley. That's my opinion. It's a simple opinion, and it's just it's just how I think it is, in my opinion. But. I believe that this is the game where Liverpool actually going to go back on track. Liverpool, I'm not sure who Liverpool have in the coming games. So maybe we can check it out together. Liverpool have Burnley. They have Newcastle at home. I believe they can win that game. They have Arsenal in the FA Cup. That's completely, I don't know what's going to happen because it depends on the lineup. They have Fulham at home. They have Bournemouth away. Bournemouth are in a good form. But I believe that, I believe that Bournemouth will win. Will, will will play good, but I believe Liverpool away from home against a team like Bournemouth, I think Liverpool might win the game. Ryan, you don't like it, so I don't know. We will draw 1-1 one, one tomorrow. Oh, you're too pessimistic, Ryan. Stop this shit. Stop this shit. Come on. Okay, bro. Just keep it. Calm down. You're one point behind Arsenal. Calm down. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I believe that Liverpool will win. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it is. But talking about London is forever blue, <laughs> ah, Chelsea fans. But let's move on to Arsenal. And before I go to Arsenal, Arsenal play West Ham. I'm going to tell you one thing. I believe that Odegaard handball was a handball. The reason why. Uh, okay, I will check it, but uh, I will check it. Martin, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I will check it. I just don't know. I, I, I'm going to check it in a bit. But in my opinion, yes, yes, it's coming. Jared Bowen versus Saka comparison. Yes, it's coming. It's coming. Jared Bowen versus Saka comparison. But uh, my point is Kai Havertz is suspended. I don't know who's going to play left eight now. Uh, it's going to be probably Trossard or something. Or it might be Smith Rowe. I don't know who is Arsenal are going to play on that left sided. Or it's going to be Jorginho and Declan Rice is going to play. That's what I believe. But I believe the Odegaard thing is a, is a was a handball. It wasn't given. I don't think it's malicious. But I think they, they were confused. Right? To be honest. The reason why I'm saying it's a handball. And I looked at one of the... There's a guy on TikTok who's a referee. And who he talks. He has no agendas, of course. And he talks about these calls. And he said that... He was falling, but the hand didn't break the fall. Like, he didn't actually put his hand on the floor, on the ground. So it's definitely a handball because he was just balancing himself. And you balancing yourself, you balancing yourself, it doesn't justify you touching the ball with your hand. If I'm doing this and I'm trying to balance myself, that doesn't justify me touching the ball with my hand, right? Uh, Arteta will play left eight 100%. His arm restored his balance yes martin but it didn't but but that has nothing to do with the uh, uh with the law the law is like if you break your fall right that's in my opinion but i don't think it affected the result and I, i'm quoting hussam here big up hussam of course hussam told me uh something very very important hussam said something that is is saying that or uh, uh that goal might not have come for muhammad salah if the penalty was given. So it's a, it's the same thing, right? If the penalty was after the goal, yes. So that's the thing about it. Uh, let me just type something. It's 
in my opinion. So Arsenal play West Ham. And you guys want to see the comparison? You guys want to see the comparison between uh, uh, Saka and Jared Bowen. So let's let's do it. Let's do it. Saka and Jared Bowen. Bukayo Saka, 23-24. Jared Bowen. Here we go. We'll look at it. To be honest with you, there is no comparison. I'm just going to show you and you guys are going to be absolutely astonished. This is the comparison between Jared Bowen and Saka. Right? XG, Saka has better assists, Saka has more, key passes, Saka has more of action, carry Saka has more, dribble Saka has more. I don't know what MPG is. I don't know what MPG is, but MPG is something. I don't know what it is. MPG is from non penalty goals. So non penalty goals. So Saka scored more goals at penalty. So see, there's a massive difference. Saka is clear. Of Bowen in terms, this is just the stats, and we can actually do a comparison between two players. We can actually look at that, but let me just talk about the game a little bit. Arsenal play West Ham. Looking at the both results, Arsenal won against Brighton and lost to Aston Villa and drew to Liverpool. I believe West Ham won 2 0, and then before that, they won 3 0. And so, West Ham have kept three clean sheets after the last 5 0 to. Um, Fulham, three clean sheets in the Premier League. No, 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 two clean sheets in the Premier League. It's very surprising, in my opinion, that West Ham are keeping clean sheets because they play a little bit. They have Paqueta, they have Bowen, they have Kudos, they have World Prance. But I believe that Arsenal in this game, and let me just say that, Arsenal in this game, they are at home, and I'm going to keep the same energy. No one goes to the Emirates at the moment and be favorites. I believe this game can be same or similar to Arsenal versus Brighton. Not in the terms of footballing, but in my opinion, when Arsenal played Brighton, they made them look mediocre in their way, like Brighton couldn't build from the back. I believe that William Saliba, Ben White, and Gabriel at the moment are playing very, very high-class football. That's what I believe. I believe that. And that's just fair and honest assessment. Why I'm saying that? Because at the moment, every time I'm watching them, they are playing a football that they're reading the game better. Like William Saliba against Arsenal was reading the game amazing. Who says draw? Arsenal play a freaking at home against West Ham and you're selling it's a draw written all over it? Give me a break, bro. Please, people, give me a break. Give me a break. How are you saying that, bro? How are Arsenal playing at home? You're saying a draw. A draw for Arsenal at home? Let's check Arsenal at home. Let's check the table. And let's check what Arsenal did at home. This is nuts. Arsenal at home. Arsenal drew two games at home. Right? Drew two games only at home. I don't think Arsenal against Spurs, if I'm not mistaken, and against, I don't know, against who? Against Fulham in the beginning of the season. I am not disrespecting the West Ham team. I'm respecting the Arsenal team. How are we saying that West Ham are going to get a draw? Against, if, if West Ham get a draw against Arsenal, it's 100% an upset. Are we, are we nuts here? Declan Rice Derby. Are we nuts? Tactically, Arsenal now, West Ham, they don't they defend with numbers, but I think Arsenal have now the means to break them, right? With Saka, Odegaard. There's no chance you're telling me that West Ham are going to these favorites. Oh, Adi, I'm going to answer your question, Adi. I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to answer your question, but it's going to be controversial, but I'm going to answer your question. But I believe that Arsenal, in my opinion, are favorites. So people want to tell me the Arsenal, and I said Arsenal need to replace Kai Havertz, blah, blah, blah. But I think at the moment, Arsenal are playing very good football. And let's look at their stats, right? Let's look at Arsenal stats. Let's look at how this Arsenal team is playing, is the stats on the table, right? 
they have a problem which we can see Arsenal average position are sixth on the table average 60 percent ball position clean sheets their first expected goals their fourth shots on target big, big chances created and that's what something I'm telling you about top of the table Arsenal are eight in the chances created you can see here big chances made you don't miss a lot of chances right uh they are first in penalty awarded xg conceded and this is one of the things arsenal don't concede a lot of chances and people say about well, teams are playing but because arsenal don't concede a lot of chances because of this because of that it's because of Declan rice it's because of saliba it's because of gabriel it's because of ben white now so arsenal are reading the game very well does that make sense so if we look at this one if we look at this all over and we'll see, for example, where Liverpool are versus Arsenal. Look at this. Arsenal, 14 big chances. And they conceded a little bit more. Man City, 16. And Liverpool are 21. So Liverpool, the difference between Arsenal and Liverpool... Ah, uh, uh, you can't see it, guys. I'm sorry. Apologies. Here we go. I hope you can see it now. So now, uh, look at Arsenal. 14 versus Liverpool. 21st. That's a big difference, though. That's a big difference. Big chances conceded. That's a massive difference, in my opinion. That's absolutely a massive difference. So Arsenal, in my opinion, their defense is winning them the games. right? Arsenal score goals, yes, but they don't concede a lot of chances. And actually, I have to say one thing. The big chances missed, and we're going to just look at it now. Big chances missed. Arsenal are 11th, right? Let's look at this particular table because this actually... Chelsea, Liverpool, big chances missed, right? Aston Villa, Man City. Look where Arsenal are. Arsenal are 11, 25 chances missed. In comparison with Liverpool, for example, Liverpool missed 34 big chances. So that means Arsenal don't miss a lot of chances. Though. They don't miss a lot of chances. But that's one of the things I wanted to tell people about. Arsenal create chances and they score them, but they don't create a lot of chances. But when they create chances, they actually uh, uh, score them, right? Uh, uh, Liverpool are second, yes, screams Nunes. Nunes and Jackson are ridiculous, right? But I think Arsenal, what do they need in January? Now, this notion, and I want to answer something that I asked people talk about it yesterday, right? Why did I say that Jared Bowen won't leave? West Ham to go to Arsenal to sit on the bench. It's not disrespecting Arsenal. It's actually thinking that Jared Bowen moved up a level. What I mean by that? Someone like Jared Bowen will have to go to a team that is he's guaranteed a start. He's not going to go to Arsenal and battle it with Saka, especially with Saka. If you tell me he's going to go and battle it with Martinelli, I'm going to tell you he might go. But to battle it with Saka is completely different. Because battling it with Saka, he, you know that you're not going to shift Saka from that place. You aren't going to shift Saka from that place. And that's something that you need to understand, people. You can could have gotten Kudus. And I said that before. Arsenal could have gotten Kudus. You can go and get Kobu, the guy that plays for Real Sociedad, and he can battle it with Saka, right? These are the, the levels of people that you can get at your club. You know what I mean? He can battle it with Saka, but you're not going to get Jared Bowen. You're not going to get Jared I'm going to compare Jared Bowen. Okay, LFC Aaron. LFC, I don't know, I'm gonna okay. Salah, here we go. Muhammad, I, I know you guys like this uh, comparison, right? You guys like this comparison, so I'm gonna remove Saka and I'm gonna show you the screen at the moment. Muhammad Salah in green versus Jared Bowen in red. Assists, key passes of action, carries. This is the comparison between Muhammad Salah and Jared Bowen. I believe Jared Bowen is a very good player, he's absolutely killing it. At the moment, right? He's killing it at the moment. Okay, guys, can we just stop this comparison thing? I know you guys like it. We can. I can actually do the comparison thing. But I, I hope that you like this me sharing the screen, guys. I want a yes or no question, uh, yes or no answer in the uh, chat. Do you like me sharing the screen or no? Do you like like me changing to this, coming back, changing, coming back? Is this something you like? It's a yes or no. And, it, and also we have over 300. Yes, if you do Kulusevsky. I can do Kulusevsky with, with who? With who? I, I'm actually going to get a tactical board now, guys, that you're going to see here. 
I'm going to add a tactical board in this side, right? Soon, maybe by soon. But listen, we have 350 people here, people. So hit that like button. Back Kayoko from PSG. I don't watch a lot of Erdivitsa to tell you who they sign, right? But listen, we're talking about Arsenal people. Bias comparing between Salah and Saka. More bias comparing between... I actually can compare between Salah and Saka, of course. There is gonna be there is gonna be it's gonna be completely different, but look at this. Look at this. Muhammad Salah is more of a distributor. Muhammad Salah XG is, is higher than Saka a little bit, but he doesn't carry the ball, he doesn't dribble, and he doesn't do off action. Right? Offensive actions. Because Muhammad Salah non-penalty goals is higher than Salah. So that's it. Nobbins is the goat analysis. But yes, people, we still have 360 people here. So can we get the likes up a little bit? I don't know what we are now. Where we are now in the likes? Oh, we're oops, almost at 300 likes, people. So hit that like button for us. It's important. Listen. Uh, Wolves Lauren is saying, Wolves Lauren is saying, should Odegaard step up or Martinelli? Absolutely brilliant question. And I want the chat to answer it. Who should step up more? Mo showed a big six mini league. I'm not sure. Where did you show it? But guys, let me answer the super chat first and I'm going to show it. Guys, should Odegaard step up or Martinelli? Which one do you think will help Arsenal more if, if, he, if they step up? Which one? In my opinion, the one that should step up more is Martinelli, not Odegaard. Because Odegaard is coming back to the fold. I believe Odegaard is playing better now. I believe Martinelli should step up big time. Yes, Ma Martin. Thank you so much. Now I see it, Martin. Now I see it. Thank you. But I believe the winger should step up. I believe the winger should stay up. Right? I'm going to share the big six leagues because Martin is asking me to share it. So I'm going to share it at the moment and we're going to see what Martin wants from us. Right? Here we go. Mi big six mini table. I don't know. Premier League 23-24 played Arsenal. I'm not sure what is this, to be honest. To be honest with you, I actually have no idea what is this. Big six together. Arsenal 5-1-2, draw three and have nine points. However, Arsenal played how many games at home? Can someone in the chat tell me how many games at home? How many games did Arsenal play at home? Can someone tell me? And how many games did Liverpool play away from home? And how many games Spurs play at home? And how many games Spurs plays away from home? Spurs lost the Chelsea one only. So Arsenal played three away from home. They played Man City at home. They played Live, uh, Manchester United at home. And they played Spurs at home. And they played Chelsea away or at home. I don't know. They played Chelsea away or at home. I don't know. Did, did Arsenal play Chelsea away or at home? Arsenal are title favorites. Yeah, people are making fun, of course. But yep. So thank you, Martin, for the thing. It's absolutely really, really good. That thing that you shared. Thank you so much. But I'm going to go to the super chat again. I'm going to say why I believe Martinelli have to step up. And I'm going to actually show you why I believe Martinelli should step up. Because of this. So look at this. Goals and assists. Right? This is what we're looking at, people. Martin Odegaard has seven. Bukai Saka has 11. Right? Goals and assists. Martin Odegaard, seven. The one that is down the drain is Martinelli 4. Gabriel Jesus, who was injured for a bit. So I believe Martinelli needs to step up a little bit. Why I'm saying that? Because the reason why we talk about Gabriel Jesus bringing everybody to the fold, bringing Martin Odegaard, bringing Saka, Havertz, Martinelli, right? It's because Gabriel Jesus is the false nine. So he needs to get involved in the game, blah, blah, blah. His job is mainly not to score abundance of goals. Like, but Martinelli's job is to score goals and have assists from that side. So he isn't. So I believe Martinelli needs to step up a little bit. 
a little bit. Looking at the assists, Bakai Saka has six. Martin Odegaard has three. So Martin Odegaard has like, if I believe, four goals. Martinelli doesn't have a lot of goals. He has two goals and two assists. That's not enough for them to win the league. So that's what I believe. But thank you so much, Wolves Learn. Guys, send your questions in. I'm going to try to answer them on time, of course. There is a question that is not related to Arsenal that I'm going to answer in a second. But I believe against West Ham, and this is, hear me out. West Ham are going to sit deep. It's all about the overlap from Ben White on that right side. Right? It's all about the overlap from Ben White on the right side. It's all about... The support from Zinchenko to Martinelli. And whoever is going to play in that left midfield is going to be Declan Rice. If he plays Jorginho and play Declan Rice, I don't see a reason for Arsenal to be at home. And let me tell you why. I don't see a reason from Arsenal to be at home and play Jorginho in the six. You need Declan Rice to be in the six. The reason why I'm saying that, because you need Declan Rice to stop West Ham on the transition, if West Ham try to attack Arsenal on the counter attack, you need to stop Ham. That you need to stop it, right? That's what I believe. That's what I believe. I uh, thank you, Mister Happy, for the uh, for the for the for the comment. I appreciate you. I'm not asking anybody to do anything, but thank you so much. But I believe that Arsenal should stick to Declan Rice at the six. Play Trossard in the eight, play Smith row right in the eight, and play Martinelli on the left. Don't drop, don't drop, don't play Jorginho. There is no reason for Arsenal to play Jorginho and play uh, uh, Rice. Just play Declan Rice at the six. That's what I believe. I believe Trossard on the left might help Martinelli, as Melo's saying. Yes, 100%. 100%. Absolutely. I agree with that. Guys, I can't believe that we're almost two likes away from 300. Can you believe a solo show? We have 300 likes. 300 likes, people. Just two likes to get 300. You can up your likes target to 400, mate. 300 already, Adi. Thank you so much. But I believe Arsenal, to be honest. Paqueta would be ideal for Arsenal in the left eight. Oh, my God. What a comment. What a comment. This is the comment of the day. Imagine a midfield of Declan Rice in the sixth. Odegaard and Paqueta on the left eight. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. That would be fantastic. But to, to, for the last thing about Arsenal, in my opinion, is that Arsenal... Uh, thank you so much, Melo. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the nice comment. Appreciate you. Mo just got... <laughs> Listen, oh my God, I'm thinking about it. Paqueta, it's the same as like when I'm thinking about Manchester City and I think a midfield of Rodri, Paqueta and Kevin De Bruyne and I'm like, Woo, that's spicy. That's spicy, baby. Absolutely. 100%, that's so great. Because I've, Declan Rice, Odegaard and Paqueta would be ridiculous. Rodri, Paqueta and Kevin De Bruyne is even better. It's even better, to be honest. Kolosevsky, uh, Kolosevsky cannot play an eight. Kolosevsky needs to play on the right side. But, again, moving on from Arsenal, I know you guys like to talk about Arsenal. To talk about Arsenal. But I want to talk about Manchester City. Though. Men City are coming back. The Sharks are coming back to hunt the people. The Sharks are coming back after winning the Club World Cup. The Club World Cup. Man City playing Everton away. The Sharks are back, people. The Sharks are back and Holland is back. Kevin De Bruyne is back in training. Doku can play the game. And we don't know anything about the Rodri injury, by the way. And if someone can update me. Rodri said he is fine. Rodri said he is fine. Oh, JJ here with a great super chat supporting the channel. Oh, love, man. Absolutely love that. From JJ here supporting the channel is saying, Habibna Mo Tahayati Leek. Akhuk Ashraf min Sudan. Habibi, thank you, Ashraf. A Sudan min London. Uh, with Dawri Lina Rice. He's saying, uh, our love Mo. 
uh, greetings to you from uh, Ashraf from Sudan and London. The, the, the league is ours, my man. 2024 is Arsenal's year if we buy a striker in January. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. I don't know. <laughs> People are just angry about Man City for some reason. But Ashraf, I appreciate you. Before I go to Man City, let me answer a super chat that was sent to me by Adi here. Yeah. Listen, Adi. Everybody, Adi saying off topic about your take on Salah's Christmas hate. I don't I don't understand why people are hating on Muhammad Salah. I'm gonna say what I think. I'm not a mufti, right? I, I'm not gonna give you what is right and what is wrong. Muhammad Salah lives in a foreign country that celebrate Christmas, his kids go to school, they celebrate uh, the school celebrate Christmas and the uh, the whole country is in a festive time. That's my belief, people. And if you disagree with me, I actually believe that Muhammad Salah, his kids, he has to celebrate Eid with his kids as well. But he lives in a foreign country and the whole country is in a festive area. And their kids, when they go to school, they meet their friends. And so their friends ask them, what did you do for Christmas? So in my opinion, you he chose to go to live in a foreign country that celebrate Christmas. Eid in London or in England isn't the biggest festival period. So his kids have the right to celebrate. He's celebrating it because he is there. He lives in a foreign country. So, right. But I don't get it. Why there is so much hate for the guy? Why people are waiting for Muhammad Salah to... to like, like they were waiting for the post about Christmas to cuss him out. And I'm like, why? If you disagree with him, you disagree with him. But why are you waiting for the post to cuss him out. It's nuts. Why? Oh my God, Muhammad Salah, you are this, you, you, you do that, you do this, you are shit, you are this, uh, haram. like yes, haram, it's fine. Do you think Muhammad Salah, do you think Muhammad Salah, that it is haram or halal or whatever, and he did what he believes is right for his kids and his family. It's as simple as that. People just like to moan, as LFC Aaron is saying. Ridiculous. It is not. Like, I, I don't understand this. People just like to slag him. I'm like, fuck you. So like, why? Why? Just let him be. Did he hurt your family? Did he hurt you? Like, Muhammad Salah had a post a couple of days ago. Let me tell you how bad people just want to wanna just like cuss him, okay? Muhammad Salah had a post a couple of days. The whole of Liverpool Football Club went and visited a cancer hospital for kids around Christmas. So what you do, you wear the Christmas clothes, you be festive, you be happy, you show the kids love because these kids believe in Santa, believe in Christmas. There are sick kids in the hospital. So he was wearing these things and he the, the club took some pictures, posted them online and the amount of hate the guy got. And I'm like, the guy is visiting a cancer hostel for kids around Christmas time. What do you want him to wear? He's definitely going to wear Christmas stuff because he lives in a foreign country that celebrate Christmas. These kids believe in Christmas. This is their festival time. So he's just doing that. It was crazy the amount of hate the guy got. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's, and it's up to you to believe. Nobody, be, if you don't believe in Christmas, it's up to you. But anyway, long story short, JG here is sending a super chat, supporting the channel as well. But that's my answer to you, people. That's my answer to the people that send super chats. JG, smash the like people and support Mo. One of the most humble, knowledgeable, objective people in that crazy YouTube fan world. A pleasure to watch you. Listen, thank you so much for the super chat. Like, to be honest with you, the fact that I'm sitting here on Christmas Day and I'm having people super chatting me and I'm having people, 360 people watching me today just fills my heart with joy. Like I'm sitting here on Christmas Day. I'm giving you a show like an hour, 10 minutes now and I still have 360 people. You disagree with me, it is fine. But always with respect. You disagree with me, absolutely fine. You don't like my takes, I will absolutely agree with you and I will debate you and most of the every comment by the way people that comment on the sometimes I don't get time to, to respond to every comment but to be honest I actually try to respond to every comment so if you don't like my take you can comment after the video and tell me Mo we think you did this wrong and a lot of people told me in the comments Mo 
we think you said this is wrong. Mo, we think your take on this is, is stupid, is wrong, is idiotic, is whatever. And I respect you because you are my viewers. And I respect you, to be honest. But but I will never say something I don't believe in, right? And sometimes I change my opinion based on the circumstances, of course. Like, imagine if Arsenal lose four games in a row. Someone will come to me, Mo, but you said they are title contenders. Well, do you see any signs today that Arsenal will lose five games? Mo, are you going to continue before Osam starts his stream like 50 minutes ahead? I don't know. Osam has a stream. Osam, you bozo. You should have texted me and told me. Ah, Osam has a stream at five. I'm not. I'm, I don't think I will continue for that long. I, I don't think so. Osam didn't even invite me to his stream. Do you guys know that? Osam didn't invite me, but it's my anniversary and my wife has the right has the right for me to go and sit with her. We'll watch him. We'll go out for dinner or something. No one is ever 100% right. That's the beauty. So hear me out about this, JJ. I always say there is no, I'm, I'm never, I never say always right. And if I say I'm always right, I'm wrong. What country are you in, Mo? I am in America. So it's uh, 4.15 now. Uh, Daniel is saying, we appreciate you hard work more. Thank you so much, Daniel, for your support for the channel. Daniel, you have been here since the beginning, and I appreciate you. Wife is bigger than Osam. Oh, fucking 100%, Daniel. Martin. Fucking 100 and fucking 1,000%. The wife is bigger than Osam. It's not even a question, bro. What are you talking about? Thank you, Daniel, for the super chat. Really appreciate you. Going back to Man City, people, and we deviated from football. Ah, a lot of people that don't like Man City and don't want me to talk about Man City. <laughs> Shit. But listen, I hope you like the lay the overlay, the layout. It's, I'm trying. Let's talk about Man City. Let's talk about where Man City are on the table and what Man City will do this week against Mo as your viewers on the Lawa. I appreciate your hard work. Thank you so much. And also you have to watch the Lawa people because the Lawa is ridiculous. Lawa is one of my favorite shows. It's fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Let's go back to the football. Manchester City. Here we go. I like this change of the screen shit. Manchester City are fifth with a game in hand. They can, if they win the game in hand, think about it. That if they win the game in hand, they will still be fourth. Believe it or not, they will be one point ahead of Spurs. Hmm. I actually didn't know that. But to be honest with you, Man City have Everton, Sheffield, and they have Newcastle away, and they have Burnley. Do we think that Man City are favorites for all these games? So I want a number. From the next four games, I have 350 people here. Uh, from the next four games, Everton away, Sheffield at home, do the math in your head, Newcastle away, and Burnley at home. How many points do we think Man City will get? How many points? How many points do we think Man City will get? Right? Just let me know. Let me know how many points Man City will get again uh, in the coming games. By the time I update the timestamp. Wow, we spoke about all the clubs and we're still an hour in. How many points? 9 to 12 points. People say 7, 8, 9. 8, 12, the formidable centurion that you're a city for 12, uh, 12 here, Philip is saying 12, 7, one get, I love this, Daniel, always loved, 7, 12, oh, it varies, but listen, amazing, that's fantastic, one, oh, I love that, you're a liar, and I know you, MCC protocol, you're a liar, but listen, so back to the game and, and, and here, oh, thank you for the super chat here. Of course, uh, Tanya is saying from Switzerland with Swiss francs, Sean Dyche masterclass incoming, hopefully. Well, I'm not going to wish that. I am not going to wish that. But I believe it's going to be a very tough game. It's going to be a fun game to watch, in my opinion. Everton played well. Everton defend deep. You get, they're going to play at home. They're going to play at home. And I believe that actually it's going to be a very, very tough game, in my opinion, for Manchester City. Very, very tough game. 
But thank you, Tanya. W is in the chat for Tanya, sending a good super chat, supporting the channel, of course. Everton were sick against Spurs. It won't be an easy game. Absolutely, Aaron. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. 100%. Listen, eight likes, eight likes to get to 350. I can't believe that we're getting 350 likes. We are allowed to wear that. I think you should be allowed to wear all the trophies you want, Daniel. 100%. W is in the chat for Tanya, people. W is in the chat. But going back to the, uh, the Man City. So, in my opinion, if we look at the stats of the Man City as a team, I'm not sure if anybody showed you that before. Average position, Man City are first. Brighton are second, of course. Clean sheets, Man City are 11th. Man City only kept four clean sheets. Can you, uh, can you guys see the screen? Let me. Can, is the screen too small for you? Can you see the numbers? Should I zoom in? Yes or no? Can you see the screen? Yes or no? Can you see the screen good? Yes or no? Please do. Please let me know so I can zoom in or not. Uh, small. Mm, okay, so we can zoom in. Boom, boom. Is that good? Is that good? I believe that's good. All right. That's good then. You can actually zoom in more. No. When you, here you go. So Man City kept four clean sheets only. Believe it or not. Four clean sheets only. Manchester City. Right? Big chances created, third. Big chances missed, seventh. That's actually a very good number. When you create big chances, right? Man City don't miss a lot of chances. Because they create a lot of chances and they don't miss a lot of chances. So in my opinion, Man City are very good in that aspect. Very, very good in that aspect, in my opinion. I, I know you don't see it. It's on the right side, right? It's on the right. I can try to fix it, but. I can try. Let me. I got, do you want? I can try to fix it. Let me try to fix it though. Here we go. I'm trying to fix something. I'm trying to fix it for you, people. Here we go. I'm trying to fix the, the thing for you. Here we go. Now you can see. Here we go. Now you can see. Now it's better. I believe now it's much better. Isn't it? Isn't it much better now? Yes, it is much better. I know that for sure. I'm trying to get something new, people. So bear with me, please. This is the first time for me sharing screen and doing stuff. And it's not easy. I promise you it's not easy. So big chances. So Man City don't keep a long clean sheet. So let me just show you a stat, right? XG conceded. Man City are good. So they don't concede a lot of chances. However, they concede goals from the chances. Why? Because most of the chances that Man City concede, they, they, they are scored. So hear me out. So this is very important. I'm going to show you this. This is going to be very important. So you see here, Man City concede this, but they concede a lot of goals in comparison with the chances conceded. So the, one of the things that you have to understand here, that Arsenal concede two goals more than the chances uh, conceded. The problem with Man City is that when they concede a chance, and sometimes they make mistakes, they concede goals. Here we go. This is a very good mo. If KDB, Haaland, and Doku come back, they will win the four games. But who knows which... Who who know which Kevin De Bruyne is gonna come back? So people need to understand this. Which Kevin De Bruyne is gonna come back? Like it's just for me, you need to understand that a player coming back uh from an injury, a hamstring injury, isn't easy, right? It's not easy for a player to come back from an injury, it's not it's not easy at all, right? Like, like it's not gonna be something that you are seeing. Uh, like a, a player come back, like you're not going to see the Kevin De Bruyne of last season right away. It's going to be tough. Like he has to get embedded in the team again. He'll have to get something called game fitness. Uh, he will have to play some games to get back to the fitness. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. 50% KDB, but that's that's not what you need. You need KDB fit because you think, 
if you think that, watch Rodri needs support. And, and I don't think that Kevin De Bruyne at 50% is going to give him support. The one that I'm looking forward to come back is Doku. I believe... Why do you mean? The world-class one. Kevin De Bruyne. The problem is, and, and I explained to you, that we need KDB to come back fit. You know, 80%. You guys... And I'm going to tell you something because I had a hamstring injury before. Yes, but it takes a little bit of time to come back. So let me tell you the difference. A lot of men say, you guys get defensive when I talk. When you have hamstring injury and come back, and that's all the players, I promise you, even if you're in the, in the, in the physio room, you get back, you train, you play some a little bit of with, with the under-21s and stuff like this. When you go back to play and you run a sprint, it's in your head. I promise you this. You guys don't know. I swear to God, this is something. Ask any footballer. The injury is always in your head. You are saving the extra 10% afraid that you... Yeah, you're afraid that you're going to get injured again. I promise you, this is something I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. This is something that you need to understand that it's not easy. It's absolutely not easy at all. Right? Like, he will come back. It will take time for him to forget. Like, I had a knee injury, MCL, and I didn't have surgery, though. But it took me a bit of time to go back to football. It took me about three and a half months to go back to playing football, even though physical therapy, I ran, I went to training, I went everything, right? But when I went back to the field, it took me a bit, every time I went to a challenge with a side foot, because it's MCL, it's inside, it took me a little bit of time. And I promise you, it was always in my head, hamstring, a knee injury. And I promise you, I don't wish this on anybody, right? I don't wish this on anybody. But in my opinion, it's going to take him a little bit of time. But I believe, actually, just let me tell you something about Manchester City that you guys, Manchester City don't look the same, but just listen, listen. I actually believe I actually believe that Man City might not need might not need Kevin De Bruyne. The reason why I say that because Man City are good enough to win the league as they are. The reason why is Liverpool aren't as good. Arsenal, I still think at the moment Man City because of Pep Guardiola, who I think will find the right combination. I'm not seeing the Arsenal that is ruthless at the moment. If we look at the table, right? If you look at the Premier League table at the moment, Arsenal are 18 points on 40 points. So if you look at this, Arsenal are on 40 points, right? 18 games, they have 40 points, Arsenal. Correct? Correct. Here we go. Arsenal are on 40 points, right? So in my opinion, it's still a little bit behind the curve of last season, Arsenal. While Man City, though, Yes, they are six points behind Arsenal. They can be only three points behind Arsenal. The fact that Man City are only three points behind Arsenal, they still have, as MCFC protocol, John Stones to come back. A fifth John Stones that is inverting in the midfield will give Rodri a massive boost, but they're still trying to find the left eight. And hear me out. Hear me out. Actually, Man City might be able to play Nunes, who I believe is a good player. Pep Guardiola will try to embed him. Matej Kovacic isn't bad. Matej Kovacic is a bad player. Nobody said he's a bad player. But at the moment, he isn't performing up to the level. And I'm going to have the same thing that I had for Diaz. I told you about Diaz. I told you about Martinelli. Matej Kovacic isn't a bad player. Matej Kovacic was very good at Chelsea. was very good at Real Madrid. But Matej Kovacic hasn't still hit the highs. So in my opinion, still Matteo Kovacic or Nunes can play on the left. And also Man, Man City can go in January and get a midfielder. I believe, and I believe actually that Phil Foden play behind the forward, Julian Alvarez play right side, 
and you play John Stones as a, you replace somebody in that defense, you play Gavardio. I believe you play Gavardio, Nathan Ake, Stones, and Diaz, and you let Stones fully invert in the midfield. And you play Rodri in the middle, and you play Nunes or Kovacic on the left. I believe that's very, very good, in my opinion. Like, I believe that's a good thing. I think Doku, you guys have no idea how good I value Doku. A lot of people will say Doku isn't good enough. So Doku lacks experience, but the guy is fire on the ball. The guy provides something that Jack Grealish doesn't have. The guy provides something not a lot of wingers have, which is elect electric winger. Electric winger. What I mean is that give Doku the ball one-on-one, -on -one, boom, Doku will hurt the defense. He might be lacking experience, he might be lacking this, he might be lacking that. But to be honest with you, Doku for me, and I want to I, I go to Doku and show you what Doku has. Doku, a new player, a new player for City, guys, has five assists already. Five assists. If I'm not mistaken, Doku has five assists. And two goals. A player that just came to Man City is 21 or 22. That's absolutely ridiculous. Is not. People think that, oh yeah, Doku doesn't have experience. Yes, he might not. But there are other players to carry his end. Kovacic's experience. Kevin De Bruyne's experience. Rodri's experience. Stones' experience. Diaz's experience. But they need them fit. They need them fit. Fit together, I think still Man City are favorites to win the league. Arsenal have a chance, a good chance, because the, 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 the top of the table now. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Come on now. Doku is just a little upgrade on Sam Maximan, who will be found soon. So the guy has seven GA in his first season at Man City. And you guys want to compare him to Alan Sam Maximan. Wallahi al-Azim, you're a fraud, Eddie. You're a fraud, Eddie. You're absolutely a fraud. So, Doc, 7GA. 7GA, same as Odegaard. And you tell me. He's going to be found out soon. Yes. The, the, let, me, let me tell you. Let me explain to you. What do you mean he's going to be found out? Like they're going to double on him? So, they double on Saka. If, if they double on him, if, okay. So let me ask you a question for everybody in the chat, right? If they freaking double on Saka, on, on Doku, that leaves spaces to other people. Same as if they double on Saka, if they double on Martinelli, if they double on Mohamed Salah, right? That's my point. At the moment, can you leave Doku one-on-one -on -one with any defender in the league? And I mean any defender. Yes, he might have an off game. Yes, he might have a, a game that he's behind. But remember, he is just 21 years old. This GS accident, he's fast and foolish. Oh, all right. But he's 21 years old, yeah, Akhi. And what do you want him to do? Let's see what JJ. JJ, thank you so much for Super Chat. After a serious injury, hardly ever anyone could get back to 100%. I had both ACLs, and the brain just tells you you shouldn't. Exactly what I said, JJ. Thank you, Ashraf. Thank you, Ashraf. Exactly what I said. The brain just tells you you shouldn't. The brain just tells you don't make the extra 5%, 10%. I am no KDB, yes, as, as JJ is saying. Man City can always come back, though, even without KDB. I agree with the super chat. Fantastic. W is in the chat for my man, JJ. W is in the chat for my man, JJ. Absolutely phenomenal super chat. Wallahi, you're, you're, you're ama this is an amazing super chat, Ashraf. Because it's exactly this. Especially for a big injury, if it was like an ankle twist, if it was a small uh, uh, tear, if it's a grade one injury, yes. But to be honest with you, like a, 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 a surgery, it's not. There's a, there a, there a comment here I wanted to show. It's, it's gone. It's gone. Uh... A9 is saying, Mo, you could say the same thing about us, Liverpool, if Thiago, Bajesis, Matip, Robo, Simicast return in January, and we get also get a left center back. Yeah, 100%. I said if Liverpool get everybody fit and they get a, a DM, and I take that back because Endo's performing, but I'm not sure how good he can stay A9. I'm not sure how good he can stay at the same level. 
I believe Liverpool have a starting eleven that is as good as anybody else. But some of the players aren't performing at the moment, which is a big deal. But yes. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, JJ Ashraf. Win. Wallahi, win. In the chat, people. Ashraf support in the channel. Big W's to Ashraf in the chat, people. Big W's to my man Ashraf. W's in the chat for my man Ashraf, to be honest, in the chat. And we're almost at 400 likes. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe this. 400 likes, people. But listen. Man City. What's up, Don Vito? Thank you so much for being here, people, for the people that are stopping by. Manchester City still, in my opinion, are favorites to win the league. And, and, and everybody, everything points to that. They still have John Stone. They still have Kevin De Bruyne to come back. And it's just it's as easy as... you. They will get their, their guys back. And, and, and I believe, against Everton, though, because I, I went back to the Everton talk and I didn't finish it, right? Let's look at Everton results, though. Let's look at what Everton did in uh, the last games. Everton versus Man United. Everton versus Man City. So Everton lost against Fulham and lost against Spurs 2-1, performing very, very well, Everton. Before that, look at this. Clean sheets, clean sheets, clean sheets. Against Spurs, Everton performed very well away from home. We'll segue to Spurs in a bit. But I believe that Man City still have coming back from the Club World Cup late Friday, I believe that Man City are good enough to win the game, but it's going to be a very tough game. I would say it's a 60-40 in Man City's fa favor, in my opinion. Some players, by the way, after travel, I'm sure they partied a little bit. I believe they will be tired a little bit. I'm not sure if Pep is going to start who is going to, is going to, is going to bench who, but I believe that Everton will give Man City a tough game. Because I believe Sean Dyche knows how to sit back, knows how to hit on the counter. So what? I don't know. I don't know how to check it. I don't. You can, you can tell me, bored with this. You can tell me the record and I will believe you. I'm not going to fact check you. But I believe one of the things that everything about this Sean Dyche team screams one thing. And I'm, I'm just going to go to Everton and tell you. He has solid defenders. He doesn't have a fantastic defense. You won't remember this team. Like you won't tell, oh my God, Mikelenko is an amazing player. You won't say Ashley Young is fantastic. You won't say, oh my God, Michael Keane or Tarkovsky are great. But everything about this team screams one thing, screams effort. And he has two wingers, Jack Harrison and Dwight McNeil that can do the job, right? And he has Calvin Lewin, who is very dangerous. When you cross to him, I don't believe he's a good footballer. Mo uh, City landed Friday. So, so I, I, maybe maybe they are ready for the game. Friday, yeah. So, yeah, I believe that City mm. will be ready for the game, in my opinion. Everton will park the bus. Everton, they have very... In my opinion, Jack Harrison and, and, and Dwight McNeil are very good for Shundaj Ball. Very, very good, in my opinion. Very, very good. Is sit back, but I'm going to show you something. Watch. Everton. Watch the fixtures. Because you guys see he sit back. Watch Everton fixtures, right? Watch this. D1 against West Ham. 3-0 against Burnley. Drew Brighton. 1 against Palace. Lost against Man United for that fluke goal from Garnacho. And then Forrest. Newcastle. Chelsea. Right? Burnley. So he sit back, but he hit on the counter very well. He hit on the counter very, very well. Like, I believe everything about this team screams Sean Dunch. Everything about this team screams Sean Dunch, in my opinion. So I believe it's going to be a tough game. I believe how Man City can, can win the game is shooting from outside. I believe Rodri is going to play a massive, if he plays, a massive, a massive factor in this game, in my opinion. Rodri is going to play a massive factor in this game. Shoot him from outside. Nunes can shoot from outside. Kovacic isn't great. I believe Foden should play behind the forums because he can shoot as, as well. I believe... Th thank you so much, Nico. Thank you so much for everybody. Is there a green screen behind you or no? No, there is no green screen. This is all... You guys see, this is all an actual thing. This is an actual jersey. 
So this is not a green screen behind me. This is an actual picture right there, right? So there is, this is not a green screen. This is not a green screen. And my wife hanged this Christmas thing. It's not me. She did. And this is, this is no green screen behind me. This is actually a real thing. This is all wall is real. It's not a green screen. <laughs> Believe it or not. So this is not. If you want to see the actual background, this is the actual background as it is. Right? This is Inter-Jersey. Yeah, there is an Inter-Jersey with Club World Cup on it. I think it's somewhere. I don't know where. Yes, the Inter-Jersey below there is a Club World Cup. But yes. Here is the record. Great. Here is the record. Guys, there's still 320 people here. So hit that like button. Get us to 400 likes. I can't believe. Here is the record. Six, one draw, six losses for Chai. All draw is minus 43. And uh, damn. Oh boy. That is tough. <laughs> that is very tough, to be honest. But I believe Ever Sean Dyche this year with Everton. And, and let me just tell you something, right? Let me show you the table again. Guys, Everton are 16 points, all right? If Everton, without the 10 points deduction, would have been 26 points. One point behind Brighton. One point. Three points behind Newcastle. So we, you can just sit here and tell me that Sean Dyche isn't cooking something different this season. You can't tell me that. Sean Dyche is cooking something else. He's definitely cooking something else. 100, 110% he's cooking something else. So yeah, I, I, I don't believe that Everton are an easy team, especially away from home. Everton aren't an easy team away from home. It's nuts. Like, people just want to say that ever. Yes, Man City are favorites. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to fucking sit here and tell you that Man City are not favorites. So I want to answer this one. She's cooking anti-football. So hear me out. I used to have a say. I used to have a say. Don't be Burnley. When Sean Dice used to coach Burnley. That's two years ago. I used to do a show with my friends. And I used to say, don't be Burnley. However, if you are defending deep. And let's go back to the table. If you are defending deep. Right? And you are scoring goals. Right, like Sean Dosh in the last games, and we can check when is the la the last time that Sean Dosh had no goals, okay, had no goals scored, okay, was against Liverpool and was against Man United. He scores goals in every game, even against Spurs. Well, I believe that Sean Dosh is playing a very effective football that is not bad to watch. Wallahi. I used to say it's very bad to watch. It isn't. And let's check out their stats. I believe they aren't a bad team. Like when I watch them, they aren't bad. Number one, they are 13th. Average position, yes, they are 17th in the league. But in XG, they are 10th. So they aren't bad, right? Big chances created. Six. They are six in big chances created. So the people that tell me he's playing anti-football, how dare you tell me that someone in six, six in big chances created, okay? And he's six in the big chances created. How is it anti-football? Yes, he's defending, but he is going forward and creating chances. So hats off to him. It's great. Is absolutely great. Very, very good for Sean Dash. Very, very good for Sean Dash. Right? Now, of course, he, they don't pass the ball well. Okay? Because they don't have ball position. XG conceded. They are 14th. So they don't concede chances. So, okay. How are you going to sit here and tell me? Yes, but it's an effective. So see this super cell, but, but it's an effective car attack in football. Right, because at the moment, without the 10 point deduction, they will be on six points, 26 points. So that's very effective. Counter attack in football 
I would say counter-attacking football and just very anti-football. If they aren't creating, but they are. They are creating as many chances, right? They are creating as many chances. Right, they are seventh in position one in the final third. That means they press a little bit. Watch this. So it's not as bad. I used to be against Sean Dyche. Not anymore. Not anymore. They're playing good football. You enjoy it. Yes, they are defending, but that's what they can do. But they are going forward with intent, with conviction. Show missed XG. I'm not sure what is that missed XG. Missed big chances. Missed or what, what do you mean? They are third in big chances missed. They are third in big chances missed. Here we go. They are third. In, because they miss a lot of chances. Because Beto misses a lot of chances. But Calvin Lewin, which is, I don't believe he's a fantastic footballer at all. But everything is built for Calvin Lewin to score goals. Does that make sense? Like, it's built for Calvin Lewin to score goals. Like everything is crossing, he's he hustles defenses and does this stuff, right? But that's what I believe, in my opinion. I believe Everton are doing what they can with the with the players they have, and I believe it's good, it's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. How many likes are we on, people? How many likes are we? Oh, 381. Whoa, people, we are 19 likes. From 400 likes, 19. So if you haven't hit the likes, if you haven't hit the like, hit that like button for me because we can get to 400, 400 likes, beautiful people. 400 likes, believe it or not. Any more questions? So I'm gonna let that, that I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about Spurs, but also send me your questions, right? Send me your questions, Spurs. Play Brighton. And that, in my opinion, would be one of the one of the games of the week. The reason why I'm saying that, because this is a very good test to Spurs. Hear me out why. Hear me out why. And hear me out why. Hear more. Hear more in this. So Arsenal played Spurs. So Arsenal, sorry, played Brighton. Arsenal made Brighton look so, so mediocre. So mediocre. Brighton is having a bad form. They lost to Arsenal 2-0. They draw Crystal Palace away 1-1, which is I don't think it's a bad result. But I think Brighton aren't playing up to the level that I'm expecting them to play. But Spurs is in a big test here. Spurs is in a massive, massive test. The reason why I'm saying that, because this is, can Spurs do what Arsenal did to Brighton? Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure if you're understanding what I mean. Can Like, what I mean is that, yes, it's away from home, but can Spurs do to Brighton what Arsenal did? Make them look mediocre, expose their flaws, prevent them from playing the, from the back. Spurs have Besuma uh, suspended. Because it's the freaking second game, the idiot, the idiot Bisuma. But your dog is back. I'm not sure who else is injured, but I will, I will, I will see who else is injured. We can actually check. We can actually check together. Do you... We can actually check who is injured from the uh, game. Let's see. Boom. Here we go. So I believe. So here we go. Bisuma's injured, Bentancur is injured, Van de Van, Madison, but everybody else is fit. Saar is fit. Uh, Susan, Kulusevsky. Uh, I, I believe I believe Romero's back, by the way. Romero is back. Uh, 350 people. Are we ever going to get to 400 likes? With seven likes away from 400. Are we ever going to get to 400 likes, people? Ever. Are we ever going to get to four? I'm going to wait. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for five more likes. The like button is underneath the live chat. And if we hit 400 likes, it's a party, people. It's absolutely a party. Because 400 likes on a solo stream, what is support from amazing and magnificent community out here supporting footy judge mode? It's 401 likes. 
what a community out here for footy judge mo you guys you guys are the best wallahi you guys are the best it's unbelievable more than 400 likes wallahi you guys are absolutely fill my heart with joy 400 likes for this video i did i did i did ya akhi i did that's why i'm waiting but going back to spurs and also get me your questions in if you want to if you want to send questions get me questions please please that people uh yeah i'm going to try to highlight uh some questions even if you're not super chats if, if super chats of course super chats just to let you know people super chats get starred automatically yes mark yes mark yes mark yes mark Bisuma just letting us down, done with that guy, does not have the mentality for a club the size of Tottenham. He's absolutely nuts because Bisuma is an amazing player. He's an absolutely an amazing player. But how about we compare Bisuma to Declan Rice? Oh, people are going to get upset. People are going to get upset with this. No, I think Declan Rice is going gonna, is gonna to be better. Why I can't find Declan Rice, though? Why I can't find Declan Rice? Oh, yeah, I know why. I know why. Home, players, midfielders. Declan Rice. We're comparing Declan Rice to Bisuma, people. If you guys didn't... Uh, if you guys don't, don't, don't know what, what's coming... Declan Rice, Arsenal, Bissouma. Ah, here we go, people. Bissouma versus Declan Rice comparison live on Footy Judge Mo. They're very close to each other. Very, very close to each other, by the way. You can see very close to each other. But I'm just going to tell you one more thing. These stats don't show everything, right? Because Declan Rice have been very consistent. He reads the game very well. Declan Rice doesn't get a lot of yellow cards. Doesn't get a lot of yellow cards. Bisuma already suspended three times. That by itself takes away from a lot. Of... So yes, so Martin, these are not six. Cat... These are six categories. They include a lot of stuff. We can go into small details. Oh yeah, so blue. Is Declan Rice and uh, red is Bisuma, right? So exactly mellow. It's exactly this. So he is very consistent, Declan Rice. He's absolutely very, very consistent. But the problem with Bisuma is that his disciplinary problem. Declan Rice is a captain material. Declan Rice, I, I it's on the screen. You can see Declan Rice versus. Kulisevsky and Saka, I can I can show Kulisevsky and Saka. But to be honest with you guys, Bisuma might be a better footballer. You know, might be flicking, stuff like that. But at the end, Declan Rice provides something else. Stability, reading of the game, discipline, leadership. Declan Rice is very consistent. Declan Rice doesn't have up and down. Declan Rice gives you an 8 out of 10, a 7 out of 10. Bisuma might give you an 8 or a 9 and might give you a 6 the game after. So, Rice, both of them play in a very high position based team, right? So Declan Rice, the difference is it's completely this. So send your questions in, but let me just. So why are you here then? Why are you here? Oh, you're not talking to me. If we manage Manchester Red and Manchester Blue, we can get almighty Manchester Purple. Uh, but listen, people. I want to say a couple of things. Uh, we we want to compare. The last thing is Saka versus Wingers. Kolosevsky. Kolo. Dian Kolosevsky and Saka. Wow. Completely different. Completely different. Yes. I swam with sharks before in Sharm Sheikh in Egypt. So yes, I did. This is in blue, you see Kulusevsky, and in red, you see Bukayo.
completely different types of players. Completely different, by the way. Completely different. SE, thank you. Th this is maybe party is a better football, but Casemiro is way more consistent. Also, it depends which team do you play for, which coach, blah blah blah. But to be honest with you, Bisuma might be a better footballer, right? Than Declan, but Declan Rice is the better DM at the moment because he's very consistent. But yeah, a uh, couple of questions. But let me just talk about Spurs. And I, I, I just the last thing I want to say about the Spurs game against Brighton. If Spurs go past this test, I think we have to now. Not consider them for the title because they still have the injuries back. But to say that Ange Stokoglu successfully transformed Spurs team. And it's done. 19 games with Spurs. 19 games for Spurs. Where are they on the table? Fourth with injuries. Four points behind Arsenal. They conceded some goals. Yes, they conceded 24 goals, which is bad. And even is not there. So that's a big, big deal. But Mo, how good Hakan Shalanoglu? Because Liverpool are linked with him for January transfer. Fuck shit, shit. What? Why? Hakan Shalanoglu. And if I got, if I got, if I show you guys Hakan Shalanoglu versus Declan Rice, you're gonna like not like it. If I show you Hakan Shalanoglu versus everybody, you're not gonna like it. To be honest. If I try to show you Shalanoglu, um, I'm trying to get it to get it on the screen. Well, like this is gonna shock you, people. As a Hakan Shalanoglu started as an attacking midfielder. And he's for Inter now, but of course you have to. But you have to understand that's different league, blah blah blah, all the stuff, right? But this is Declan Rice in red, Hakan Shalanoglu in blue. But it's different league. The difficulty of the league is different. But yes, it's completely different. But Hakan Shalanoglu has been absolutely clutch for Inter, and I, I promise you this. He plays as a six now for Inter, guys. After Brozovic left, he plays as a six. And he's actually now playing at his prime, which is nuts. But anyway, listen, the la another question here, and, and I'm not going to do comparison again. MCC protocol saying you get to spend a lot if Madrid, I don't know. This is a, just a comment that's not for me. Anybody, they want to send another question. Send another question. So we're going to discuss question. Why do you think Odegaard playing deeper is bad? Doesn't he mean to be more involved? And have more touches and influence. He doesn't hide anymore. Yes. But I actually, the problem is, did you see the pass he did to Saka a couple of games ago when he was close to the 18? Do you guys... The, SE, so hear me out. If Odega gets close to the forward line and gets the ball, he can create a lot, a lot of chances. But you're wasting his energy trying to go from deep to forward. So I believe that he is an immense playmaker that can do that if you get him there. I don't believe Odegaard should be the one who dictating the game. I believe it's Declan Rice is the one who should be dictating the pace of the game or where the ball is going to go. I believe Odegaard is a playmaker. I believe Odegaard, get him close to Saka, get him close to Jesus, get him close to Martinelli. I actually think he's immense. He's fantastic. Uh, absolutely. What do you think of Spurs this season? Absolutely revolutionized the football and for Stukoglu, I had no idea. I said I don't know him. I said he's not good. Why would I want to go on Hossam's channel? Is he alive? The bozo. Is Hossam alive yet? Anybody want to send another question or anything? But I think Spurs showing very, very good sign. Rice is good on the ball. Stop this bullshit. Rice is very good on the ball. Stop this bullshit. This is bullshit. But I believe that Spurs season has been absolutely great, has been very, very good. And I believe he is great. When is Hussam starting? I'm liking his video. I'm liking his video. I'm texting Hussam. When are you starting? When are you starting? 
anybody that want to send anything else or send a question let me know let me know uh, what were you making what were you smoking when you say Barca Tunan because I believe it's not about that 2009 I believe that that the the Man City team that I watched last year from February to June was one of the best teams I've watched. It's not, I didn't say the most enjoyable team. I didn't say, I said it's one of the best. I said he's one of the best. Would Liao, Martin is saying, what is Martin's question? Uh, would Mo, would Liao cook in the Premier League? Well, it depends. Liao needs spaces. That's proof, proof this year. I think Liao needs spaces. So he would, I don't know if he would cook, but I believe Liao is very talented. He's very, very talented in my opinion. I believe Liao is very, very talented in my opinion. Like, But I'm not sure Martin. Like I would get someone that plays in smaller spaces. Like Karatskilia would absolutely cook for Arsenal on the left side, for example. Like he would be immense for Arsenal on that left side, in my opinion. But listen, people, what the fuck is Hossam? When is he starting? The bozo. When is Hossam starting? Anybody want to send another question? I'm waiting for Hossam to start. He's an, I don't know. Mustafa still supporting Real Madrid. Yes. Uh, Hossam is about to start. Listen, people, stay on this stream. This has been absolutely one of the greatest streams in this, uh, in, in this channel. Over, let's just do over 425 likes for this. Over 425 likes. Like the video before you go. If you haven't, the like video is underneath. Say uh, we won't stop for at the beginning of the season. Now he's saying they are too young and experienced because he, he didn't know what he has. But we said. But he said that. Now, Osam is not a bozo. For sure, Osam is not a bozo. But I'm, I'm just, I'm so distracted. He has an experienced squad. So, yes, he has an experienced squad. Osam is not a boy. I just want him to start. Osam is my friend. One of the people that helped me. So, yes. Listen, people. Thank you so much for the people that are here. Thank you for everybody that is supporting the channel. Hit that like button before you go. This has been a great stream. I showed you a lot of comparisons. A lot of comparisons of players. I gave you my opinion, honestly. If you disagree with something... And I am asking 300 people here to do something for me. I need everyone comment after uh, comment after this video done. Comment and tell me what you think. Who is gonna be top in the new year? This is it. This is I want one one comment. And if you want to comment about something about this, just do it. Who is gonna be? After the new year, who is going to be top? Thank you, everybody that watched us. Appreciate you people. Stay on the stream. Don't go anywhere. I need to go now because I've been on my anniversary on Christmas Day. I'm streaming two hours for you people. Two hours. And I appreciate you guys. You stuck by me. You supported me. I love you guys. And I appreciate you guys being here. And my wife probably is going to like kick me out of the house now because I streamed for two hours. Thank you so much, people. I appreciate you. Thank you for everybody that supported me with the Super Chat. Ashraf. Let me give a shout out to everybody that supported me with the Super Chat. Ashraf, Daniel, Tanya. Of course, Wolves, Lauren, Adi, Ozan Kabak, Andrew Wright, Jay, Hamza Stri. Appreciate you, people. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for a reaction after the beautiful games. We'll see you guys soon. And we are out of here.